<laughs> to always work large. This piece is 8 feet by 8 feet, and I've been doing pieces 8 feet by 12 feet, 8 feet by 6 feet, 8 feet by 8, 8 by 10. I kind of want the question brought forth, where does this fit in? Because this is a question that's been asked of me my whole life, where do I fit in? So I'm kind of asking the same thing of these pieces, where do they fit in? Are they drawing? Are they sculpture? Are they painting? Are they mixed media? Um, it's kind of hard to define. And the viewer and the audience kind of has to make up their own mind and make that decision you know, on their own. And I kind of like that because I don't like all questions being answered by each piece. I want some unanswered questions left when you view a piece of art. My work is very intuitive, it's emotionally driven, and pieces suggest other pieces. A lot of people ask me, where do your ideas come from? And sometimes they come from me, sometimes the art suggests it. It's, it's a kind of a scary way to work because it is intuitive and it's, it's, your gut is telling you whether this is right or this is wrong. So it's, it is risky, but it works well for me and I, and I think I get a fairly decent result with it. Historically, I was trained in 2D as a painter, but I was always taking fiber courses and sculpture courses. At that point, I didn't realize how I could possibly combine all these elements. And then I went to graduate school and I was in a fibers program, but I worked three-dimensionally and I worked mixed media and I finally kind of worked the color issue into sculpture and into process and materials. And then I, it's, it's gone through all kinds of evolutions and that's what I view as a very important part of my art is that that idea and the evolution of that idea and how it kind of is in the circular pattern that even if I lose something for a while eventually it's going to come back but it's going to come back in a very kind of different way in a more mature possible way. I think this work is that kind of thing where it's, it's, it's from the past, but it's now come back and it's evolved, it's matured even more. And at this point, I, I say I'm not working with color because truly I'm just using with black, white, red, and pink. And, and I've done this before where I've just, color has abandoned me and, and that's okay. I know it'll eventually come back again, but this is where I'm at right now. This is what's important and this is what I'm working with. It's been a very productive year. I mean, I come to my studio, I work. I don't have a computer here, I don't have a TV here, I listen to music while I'm working, but I work the whole time I'm here. I had been thinking about for a long time about the fact that drawings, which I love, never have a strong physical presence. And I was thought, what could you do to create a strong a drawing with a strong physical presence. And one morning I woke up and I was coming to my studio and all of a sudden the black hole that I existed in so early in my childhood reappeared and reopened. I was like falling into it and I was just like, I was so mad because I thought I, and after all these years of therapy that I had done, that that wouldn't happen Well, it did. And at that point I realized, go buy some plywood and take the graphite and just cover this, gra this, this plywood. And so I did, I brought two four by eight sheets of this wood and this high grade plywood, which has a very smooth surface on one side and the knots on the other side. And I, I kind of cut the corners off so that there was, there was just a soft curve to them. And I just covered this, these four by eight sheets with graphite. And then while I was looking at it, I thought, 
there has to be some way out of this. And so I went and got drill bits and drilled an abstract pattern into it and titled the piece Out of the Darkness. And that started that whole series of these large four by eight, eight by eight drawings on wood that I also drilled holes into the wood. I also took a saw and went through creating patterns. So you'd see some of the natural wood, you'd see some of the indie ink, you'd see some of the graphite. Every artist makes a conscious decision. Are you gonna make art or are you gonna make an art product? And if you're gonna make art, it's gonna be a lot more difficult. The woman who I did my MFA with one time took me aside this and she said that 90% that of all galleries do not show art, they show an art product. And she said 10% of them show art. And she pointed at me and she said, and that's gonna be your lot in life. And, and there's a chance it may never happen, but you know what, I still get to make my work. I get to go work in my studio. When I was in Banff, Canada, one of the visiting artists was Judy Fath, and we had many, many long conversations. And we, I talked about the advantage of living in New York. She said, yeah, there are advantages, but she said, you know, you can do all the network and all this. She said, but you have to have the work to back it up so that if that door is open for you, you have the work to back it up. And she says, I don't mean like one or two years. She said, they want to see that you've been making substantial work for an extended amount of time. So you can network all you want, but if you don't have the work to back it up, it's wasted. So um, I think I've got quality work now.